What's up guys, my name is Calvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. So on my last video, seeing what I can find outside part three, a lot of you expressed how much you enjoyed the video and wanted to see more. So in today's video, I am doing seeing what I can find outside part four. So let's see what I can find. So I just stumbled upon a very small yet very unique species of spider. Let me go ahead and grab her really quickly so that you can get a better view of her. Oh, there we go. So this right here is a female Microthena gracilis, a spined Microthena spider. So as you can see, these spiders are equipped with spines, these thorn-like protrusions that stick out from their abdomen, as you can see where I'm holding. Now these spines serve as a deterrent, uh, a protection against birds so that birds are less likely to want to consume these spiders. Now the males, the way to tell the males apart from the females, is that the males lack spines completely, but the females are equipped with 10 spines on their abdomen. So that is a, an easy way to differentiate between the two. So this particular spider is actually a species of orb weaving spider. The reason why is because it's within the family Araneidae. So the family Araneidae are spiders that are true orb weavers. Only spiders within this family are considered true orb weavers. There's many other spiders that have orb weaver in their name, but they are are not true orb weavers if they are not within the family Araneidae. Just to give you a few examples, long-jawed orb weavers, which are within the family Tetragnathidae, they are not true orb weavers, despite orb weaver being in their name. Just to give you another example, Oloborid orb weavers are within the family Oloboridae, so they are not considered true orb weavers. So that is just to give you a you know a clear up or an explanation to what is a true orb weaver and what is not. So I'm gonna actually put her back, but it was so cool to find her. I love this species. It reminds me of like an Oreo because of the color, the the black and white. <laughs> so really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys my brand new line of stickers that I have available for sale on my website. All of these are various animals that I drew on paper by hand, colored them in, and then converted them into high quality, long lasting, waterproof stickers. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like up close, here's one of my favorite drawings that I drew of a European hornet. All of these drawings were achieved by using these markers to color them in. If you're interested in purchasing any of these stickers, you can head on over to my website, calvinwiley.net, or you can hit the link in my description which will send you directly to my website for you to purchase them. Thank you so much to all of those in advance who end up getting one for supporting my small business. And now, back to the video. Ooh, oh, I love this species of beetle. Uh, I'm gonna catch it with my hands even though I usually catch them with my, my net. Oh gosh, so fast. Gotcha. Oh, nice. So this right here is Cisandella sexcatata, which is a six-spotted tiger beetle. Oh, wait, there we go. Sorry, the camera got blurry for a second. But these beetles are predatory. Uh, they are a predatory species of beetle. And as you can see, those mandibles right there, they use those serrated mandibles to catch their prey with, and then they just, just eviscerate them. They just chew them up alive. But their mandibles are not able to break human skin. So just to give you an example, if I put my finger in there, it can't do much. It's trying, but it, it doesn't, it really doesn't even feel like anything. So yeah, if you're an insect, yeah, be very afraid. <laughs> but just take a look at their their body coloration, just appreciate that for a few seconds. That metallic emerald coloration, it's just so beautiful. I just noticed it's left antenna, it's missing a little bit, but that's okay. Just a natural imperfection, you know, we've, we've all got them. 
but yeah six spotted tiger beetle these are actually one of the fastest running insects well just tiger beetles as a whole not i'm not saying this particular species of tiger beetle because there are many um they can fly too but they can run faster much faster than they can fly um so they use their incredible speed to run and hunt down insects and then they snatch them up with their mandibles and eat them alive uh, their eyesight for a beetle is actually fairly decent they can see you know pretty pretty well for an insect but yeah super cool I'm gonna let you go now You guys see that right there? Look at that beautiful species of a dragonfly. That's Tempetrum internum, which is a cherry-faced meadowhawk dragonfly. I'm gonna try to catch it so that I can show you guys how beautiful this dragonfly is. But it just landed somewhere else, but hold on. Let me try to get it. We're gonna come to the side right here. All right, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Got it. I got it. I can hear it flying in the net. You see it moving around in there? Let me get it out for you guys. There we go. Take a look at this beautiful dragonfly species. So like I said, this is Sympetrum internum, which is a cherry-faced meadowhawk dragonfly. There we go. So if you saw my last video of seeing what I can find outside part three, I caught a female Eastern Pondhawk dragonfly. That dragonfly, as well as this one, they are within the same family, uh, Libel Luidae. So they are distantly related. Dragonflies are efficient aerial predators. They rely on their two large compound eyes that take up most of their head to spot out insect prey to feed on and then they consume them with their sharp serrated mandibles. You can't see its mandibles right now because they are not exposed at the moment, but dragonflies can see in almost 360 degrees of vision. Their eyes, as you can see, make up most of their head, so they can see in front of them, they can see on the side of them, so they have great peripheral vision. They can see above them, and they can also see almost entirely behind them as well. So I'm going to try to let this guy go. I mean, if he does go, I don't know if he wants to chill for a few seconds, but there we go. <laughs> All right, so I see a red spotted purple butterfly flying around. Laminatus Arthemis Asianix. So let me see if I can catch this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. got it. Oh, that was sloppy, but I got it. <laughs> all right. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, so if you saw my last video, um, I call it a spice bush swallowtail and it had some tattered wings. I pretty much explained that in the wild butterflies will have natural imperfections such as this one that I'm holding. As you can see, it's four wing. The tip of it is gone. You know, that is actually really common when it comes to butterflies and also moths when they're flying around you know just natural wear and tear they bump into things you know things happen where their wings just get you know a little messed up because of how fragile they are but it can still fly perfectly fine but this right here is Laminatus Arthemis Astyanix, which is a red spotted purple butterfly. Now you may be wondering why it's called a red spotted purple butterfly. And I, <laughs> I would be asking the same exact thing as you because it's neither red nor purple. I believe I read somewhere why it's called that. And honestly, I kind of forget why, but in my personal opinion, it should be called a orange spotted blue butterfly, but that is just me. But, you know, they're super, super pretty, um, especially when the sunlight hits their wings. They are a nice... Actually, let me, let me show you what it looks like in the sunlight. So now you can really see the iridescence of their wings as opposed to them being in the shade. Look at how beautiful this species is.
So the adults of this butterfly species, as you can see, are gorgeous. The caterpillars of this species, however, are very unique looking. And I'll put them up on screen so that you will know what I'm talking about. As you can see, they actually mimic bird poop or bird droppings. And this is a tactic so that they can go undetected, for the most part, from predators such as birds. You know, birds are going to see them and be like, oh, that's, you know just bird poop. I'm not going to eat, you know, eat bird poop, you know? Um, but yeah, that's kind of how they get away with going undetected. So yeah, pretty cool find. I'm going to let this butterfly go. Well, that is going to conclude today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one in particular. I know that many of you have expressed how much you enjoy this series of me going outside and seeing what I can find. If you want to see more of that, just let me know in the comments below. Um, please leave a like if you enjoyed today's video and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon and turn on post notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, KelvinWiley.net. And one more thing, I just want to say and give a huge big thank you to all of you guys for allowing me to hit a hundred thousand subscribers that for me personally is a huge huge milestone and i cannot express how thankful i am from the bottom of my heart to each and every one of you for allowing me to hit that goal so thank you so so very much guys um <laughs> i don't know where this channel is going to take off from here but i'm just so <laughs> grateful that you know i i have all of you guys and the support that i get from you in the comments, I, I just, I'm just so happy. I, I can't thank you guys enough. So I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.